before eight is the time, as we just wait for the Education Secretary to join us in uh, our Westminster studio. Let me take advantage of that and bring in some of the emails, texts and tweets that you're saying about the uh, speech yesterday from Boris Johnson. Richard says, Johnson was totally full of schoolboy nonsense. I've changed one of the words there. Zero constructive things to say. Not even worth listening to. Why are we all bothering? Uh, Yenoa, if I'm saying that correctly, the country is crying out for leadership and a clear strategy. Instead, we watch a rank average managerial pep talk. I, I have to say that now is the country crying out for you. Yeah, you can say that and a strategy. Yes, I think many would say that. But you, it was a clever speech. Whatever you say about him, he can write a speech. Now, whether it was the right speech at the right time, I agree with all of that. Um, but we'll go on. Uh, Sean in Surrey, it was a terrible speech. If I wanted to go and listen to a comedian, I've gone to the comedy store. Food shortages, food prices rising, still petrol queues. Are there still petrol queues? I, I didn't see any yes in Mind you, I only, I only went past two petrol stations. Oh, actually, I didn't look. They might have not had any. I, I, I know I've told you this before. It's a, such a marked difference when you're in the north. Such a marked difference. I mean, if any of you fancy driving to Manchester to fill the tank, but I know it's rather self-defeating because you've got to come all the way back. Uh, gas and electricity prices, going back to Sean now, gas and electricity prices rising, poorest people in society losing universal credit. NI will increase to pay for social care. Council tax to rise by £500. And Boris Johnson talks about building back and beavers. It's pathetic and it's insulting. Someone who asks me to keep their identity to themselves, so I shall. Uh, says he she says i've been on disability benefits due to mental health issues for many years i was completely disillusioned with the labor party therefore voted for boris i won't pander to jealousy of the rich or demonization of those in power i find it to be a negative emotion that is unhealthy i'm happy with what i have i believe success often comes through some sort of struggle that's life we need to build up our economy and sometimes life isn't easy and fluffy we have to back it through the tough stuff to get to success Thank you, uh, sir or madam, and good luck to you with your uh, uh, mental health issues. I hope they uh, improve. Barbara says it was appalling. Jokes about all this horrible crisis caused the lockdowns and a very communist logo in the background. Pablo says he played to the audience in the hall, not the British public. Well, again, th that is uh, always the situation that you have to look through the, uh, the prism, as it were, or whatever you want to call it, of the fact that he is surrounded by hundreds of the party faithful. And that is a, a, an aspect of it. Uh, just a couple more before we have the Education Secretary. Jason says, gas prices are going out of control. You can't build back better without destroying everything first. Um, this comes in from Thomas and Mardi. It's not about tone, but about problem solving. What policies did he announce that will solve the lingering problem he and his fellow citizens are facing? Fellow citizens don't want gags. Gags don't help them pay their increased bills. So it's at best a mixed reaction. But one policy that was announced, of course, was in the field of education, which makes it wholly appropriate that we can welcome to the show now Nadim Zahawi, who is Education Secretary, joining me from the Westminster Studio. Good to have you on, Mr Zahawi. Just to listeners who perhaps were absolutely blitzed by the string of gags and witty one-liners, what was the policy that specifically addresses you and your colleagues? Good morning to you. Good morning, Nick. So uh, uh, we want to make sure that we retain maths uh, chemistry, physics, computing teachers, and hopefully retain them in those schools in the most disadvantaged areas of our country as part of our levelling up plan. And this is a up to £3,000 retention bonus, effectively. So uh, those teachers in the early years of, of, t of their profession, um, in the years one to five, uh, can um, be eligible for that um, for up to five years. Uh, so they get a, basically a ten percent bonus, effectively, because we're we're getting to a stage now. We're very close to having starting salaries at thirty thousand pounds a year for uh, teachers, uh, and it has worked in America. We've seen some really good evidence of this that it, it reduces uh, uh, or, or increases retention by about thirty percent. Um, so it's something that I want to make sure we deliver and the Prime Minister announced it. He also, by the way, said skills, 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 which very much sits in my uh, uh, remit in the Department of Education. And uh, you know, we have a skills bill in Parliament at, at the moment. If you told me when I was under David Cameron, when I was the skills, I was the apprenticeship, actually, not the apprenticeship czar, um, uh, uh, where I delivered the apprenticeship levy and the new standards. If you said to me there'd be a Prime Minister who would... Uh, 
have a, a policy that you can at any age pull off modules to upskill or reskill and we'll back you in the uh, mm. uh, in that process in but, the uh, skills guarantee that we're offering then i would have bitten your arm off but secretary of state why maths and science surely english is important and can i put it to you languages are desperately important as well aren't they mm. you're absolutely right so languages foreign languages are important um uh, in, it's really looking at where the shortages are ah. at the moment uh, where we have gaps uh, in those schools that most need them. It's in physics, in chemistry, in computing, hence why we're, we're targeting this particular... Uh, 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 and do we know why? Money. If we go further up the conveyor belt or the supply stream, whatever it might be, why might that be? Well, I need to look at that, and you're absolutely right, to say, you know, w what is it that we are um, uh, you know, doing that is doing well and producing good teachers in maths, physics, chemistry and computing and what can we do more of and scale it and, and part of that is teacher training and I announced 500,000 uh, teacher training uh, uh, op opportunities uh, because mm. every kid you know, uh, needs a great teacher and every great teacher needs a good training. Uh, this basically this retention bonus uh, is really very much targeted as, as at the sort of current uh, gaps that I see in those most needy schools in the most disadvantaged parts of the country. The reviews are in, in the morning newspapers, and you'll accept, Secretary of State, that they help set the tone or the agenda, and they are broadly very positive. Boris doing what Boris does, extraordinary optimism and boosting, boosting the country. But, as some people have said, if you're struggling or you're worried about the gas bill, you've been queuing for petrol, you possibly there's a labour shortage, you don't know if you're going to have a turkey for Christmas... How did it address any of that, Secretary of State? I, that's a really important question. So if you remember, as we were arriving in Manchester, we announced half a billion pounds uh, for those families that are, um, or you could be in most need of additional help, whether and, with and food... And took Universal with, Credit away utility bills well that was always going to be a temporary uplift that 20 pounds we put that by the way that 20 pounds was nine billion pounds of additional help in in uh, uh, welfare but why payments. take it away as winter bites well as i said you want to focus the help which is the half a billion uh, on the families that most need it and the individuals that most need it as well as um you know seeing uh, the increase in the national living wage, as well as seeing a really dynamic uh, rebound in the jobs market, that is all you know. On the sort of the, the plus side of, of of the things that we've been able to do, the kickstart scheme two billion pounds, the restart scheme two point nine billion pounds. So we're doing a lot of stuff um, that we were an announcing at conference. Um, uh, the, the plan for jobs extended by Rishi Sunak with another half a billion. It, the PM doesn't need to announce everything in his speech, is, is really the point I'm trying to get across but to your listeners it, and viewers. It's a bit embarrassing, uh, and noting, of course, that you've served in the skills side and others, when, you're, when the Prime Minister's speech, in the view of the Adam Smith Institute, is bombastic, vacuous, and economically illiterate. That's pretty embarrassing, isn't it? So we've had a good few laughs, but it won't pay the rent. Respectfully, I would disagree, and let me try and bring it to life for your listeners through an example. I went to visit one of the biggest suppliers to the supermarkets um, in my constituency, Wheelmore, who do the fr fresh fruit and veg for the supermarket. I said, look, how's it going? Are you okay? They said, no, we're fine. We've got you know, uh, what we need to do. We know, yeah, there, are, there are obviously tightening um, uh, uh, issues around um, our workers, but Rishi's uh, uh, tax break uh, that allows to invest in capital in machinery uh, we're going to do and we're, that will allow us to upskill and reskill some of our staff that's happening across the economy it's happening in retail you've seen some great retailers invest in their people and their technology and they've done well and people like top shop and top man not do so well and eventually uh, go out of business so we're seeing a, a, a shift now you know we have moved on things like visas for HGV drivers, for um, uh, seasonal workers, uh, increased up by 5,000. But that doesn't fix the problem. What, what the Prime Minister was, was challenging all of us to do is to say, what is the long-term fix? The long-term fix is skills, skills, skills. You upskill, you reskill. Right. The lifetime skills guarantee that I was just talking to you about, right, it is an extraordinary uh, policy that this Prime Minister will deliver. 
That is where you need to be. We want to work with business. We will always be the party of business. OK, last couple of questions. Noting, coming back to the teacher conversation we had, noting that you're sitting in one of the great offices of state, courtesy with, and I hope I get her name right, Miss Mubarak, who was your head teacher back in Iraq. Was she a maths teacher, science teacher? What did she actually teach you? Secretary of she State. Was the head, she was the head teacher. Oh, the she school. didn't have a subject as such. So she didn't have, have a subject. But I was, uh, uh, to put it mildly, difficult and <laughs> incredibly <laughs> naughty. And actually... That, What's the that, naughtiest thing you ever did at school, Secretary of State for Education? Oh, my God. I tried to jump over a hedge and there was a broken pipe and it went straight through my skin, the flesh, and into my bone. Oh. On my shin, and I still got the mark on my leg. I wish I hadn't asked that. Uh, so, sporting failure for you. Lastly, on a sporting note, and reminding everybody you were the vaccines minister, and with your team, you delivered that incredible tonic into our arms. At last, one England player has come forward, Secretary of State, Tammy Abraham, the first England footballer to say he is fully vaccinated against COVID-19. You don't need telling. This comes amid growing concerns in English football that players national players or just Premier League or old teams actually there's not a big enough uptake would you commend what Mr Abrams done and what would you say to the others Secretary of State totally get the jab and get yourself and your family protected we have administered over but why the resistance with soccer players with football players do you imagine Um, I I think sometimes uh, from my experience as a vaccines minister um, people were, were looking at WhatsApp and some uh, uh, social media from anti-vaxxers completely untrue were, were cutting through and caused people concern. What I would urge every football player and everyone in the country is you know, go onto the NHS website look at Public Health England, look at our regulator, best in the world, the MHRA look at the data and the safety uh, information on these vaccines they, they save your life and of course they protect you and anyone who's vulnerable who's around you We've had marathon runners in their 30s fighting for their life because of COVID. COVID is indiscriminate, is it not? Absolutely right. Delta is so infectious. The difference now in the world is who's vaccinated and who isn't. You see it in, in all the data. So I would urge everybody to get fully vaccinated. And of course, those who are eligible, get your booster jab. Because actually, the, the, the booster with a, a single dose of Pfizer or a half dose of Moderna takes your antibodies through the roof. Go. F- this, this is how you get your protection. All right, that's the lesson from the Education Secretary Nadim Zahar. We're appearing here on LBC, where at two minutes, I'm so sorry, three minutes after eight, the news with Simon Conway. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC.